Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to CANSI 2019. I'm super honored and it's an immense privilege to be up here tonight. My name is Allison Algie. I'm a PhD student in the School of Environment, Resources, and Sustainability, and I'm going to be your master's of ceremony for this whole conference. I'm very excited. Um, so the conference team has so much planned for you this week. You probably have seen the schedule. It's jam-packed with things you're not going to get to, unfortunately, because there's so many other things going on at the same time. Um, and so over the next three days, we're three, four days, we're really cultivating this community that nurtures something different, um, hashtag something different, if you're, if you're looking to talk about these ideas. Um, and so I'd encourage you all to stay really curious, um, really question those stories that we tell ourselves continually, um, and be okay with not knowing, um, because, you know, these stories deserve questioning. Um, that being said, we do know that time is precious, and so I'm here to keep us on time. I'm going to be here making announcements, introducing to peop um, introducing people, um, in introducing keynotes, um, and also making sure that we express gratitude as we're going through this process. Um, and so that being said, the first thing I'd like to do is begin the conference with an expression of gratitude. And so I would like to introduce to you Kelly Fran Davis and her son Jacob. You're welcome to the stage. So Kelly Fran Davis is from the Cayuga Nation of the Haudenosaunee people in the Six Nations Territory. She acts as a coordinator of the University of Waterloo's indigenation strategy and research, and she has a wealth of experience working with and for indigenous peoples, sharing Haudenosaunee traditions, offering spiritual counseling, advocating for truth and reconciliation commission calls to action, and educating her community. She also holds a Bachelor of Education in Aboriginal Adult Education and teaches as a professor at Wilfrid Laurier University in the Faculty of Education. She will be joining us with her middle son, Jacob, to open the conference with a Thanksgiving address and song that to bring us to a good place in our minds to start the conference. Jacob has shared his language and songs since the age of nine, opening at the Youth and Elders Conference with Tom Porter as a keynote speaker for his first engagement. Jacob will then sing a women's song in line with the Haudenosaunee practice of holding women in high esteem. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, call, um, introducing myself and my son. I feel a little nervous and I don't know why, but that's a good thing. My aunt used to tell me it will keep me humble. <laughs> so good. Um, so as um, Alice had, <laughs> Alice, Allison had, sorry, had um, said, I am from the Haudenosaunee Confederacy of the Six Nations Territory. And our nation is the Cuga Nation. In our language, we say Gayakono, which means the Cuga language. It's the people that speak that language. Um, so anyways, what I wanted to share with you is our Thanksgiving address, as it's referred to in English. In our language, we call it the Gunyohanyo, and it means the words that come before all else. And I'm going to explain it to you in English, and then Jacob's going to share it in, in our language, in our Cuga language. And uh, then he will do a song. So in our Thanksgiving address, when they say that the words that come before all else, it's, there's um, the reason for that is because we're taught to bring our minds together, to bring our minds together as one, and to bring our minds together is a good mind, they say. Bring our minds um, in a very high um, place of divine energy. Because they say the reason that we do that is so that good things happen. So before our ceremonies and before decisions are made, before celebrations, our people will recite this um, Thanksgiving address. And... Um, they say in order to have a good mind, we need to be appreciative, like Allison had said. We need to be thankful and we need to um, be optimistic, right? So in our address, what happens is uh, our speaker will acknowledge everything in creation. And they'll always start with the people because they say that is our first family. So they start with the people and they give thanks and gratitude that they have people in their lives 
you know, people that impact their lives in a very good way, and then people that help them grow and learn um, by other ways of impact in their lives, maybe not so great sometimes, not the best experiences, but necessary, they say. We go through experiences with other people so that we can learn and grow. So after they acknowledge the people and they give the thanks for the various things that people do for us, then they say, now our minds are one. And that is where they say that um, bringing our minds together, we're starting to push everything else aside. You know, all our stresses, all our responsibilities, everything that um, we do on a daily basis as people. We need to put all that stuff aside and we need to bring our minds higher to the place of gratitude. So then they'll go on and uh, the speaker will talk about Mother Earth and mention various things that Mother Earth does for us and our environment. You know, and that's up to the speaker what they acknowledge at that time. But then again, they'll say, now our minds are one. And again, they say it's bringing our minds to a higher place, a better place. And then they'll go through different um, things on the ground, under the ground, and above the ground, including the unseen. So they'll talk about things like the minerals, the waters, the sun, the moon, the stars, the lightning. And every time they acknowledge something, the speaker will then talk about some of those things that they do for us and do for our environment, our natural environment. So for example, if they talk about, if he mentions the sun, he's gonna talk about different things that the sun does for us, provides us vitamin D and warmth and light and all those things. And then he's gonna say, now our minds are one. And he's gonna move into something else. He may talk about heaven dwellers, or as some people may say, guardian angels or spirit guides, or whatever that is. Talk about um, our prophet, which is Handsome Lake. And Handsome Lake was a prophet that came to our people in the 1700s and reminded us that we were not following our original instructions as people and what we were to do to make sure that we don't ever forget our ceremonies because all of our ceremonies for Haudenosaunee people are based on what's happening in our natural environment. And those ceremonies are only to acknowledge and appreciate what's happening in our natural environment and to give thanks for that. Because they say, if we don't do that, perhaps all those other three families of the world will be like us silly humans and not follow our original instructions. And we would be in a lot of trouble if that happened for anything in nature. If the trees decided to no longer do what they were instructed to do in at the time of creation, we'd be in trouble. Or if the winds or the rains, the waters, if any of those things in creation stopped doing what they were originally instructed to do, the entire planet would be in trouble, but mostly human beings because I was taught that we're the most pitiful of the four families of the earth. The animal kingdom, the plant life, the mineral life, and us human beings, we're the most pitiful. And they say that we're the most pitiful because we cannot survive without any one of those other families. However, all of those families can survive without us. So we have to keep that in our minds and that's why we have to do our ceremonies, to give appreciation to all those things in creation. You know, it's like getting a pat on the back. When you're doing something really well and you continue to do it, and if nobody really acknowledges that or you know, says, oh, well, that's really helping me in these ways or that way, or you don't see that, perhaps you'll say, eh, maybe, it, maybe it's not needed, right? So that's the purpose of our ceremonies is to acknowledge everything in creation and to give our appreciation. And that is how we obtain and maintain our good mind, is to always think about what our natural environment is doing for us constantly, you know? And all we have to do is say thank you. So um, when I was coming in, I had to put my tobacco down because there's various things I could have talked about. 
um, but I thought that was the most fitting, um, is to talk about our relationships and our connections to our natural environment and how important that is, not just for our sustainability, but for our future generations, our children and our grandchildren, or our nieces and our nephews. You know, we all have children in our lives and we have a responsibility to them to make sure that they also have a thriving natural environment to live and grow from. So um, that is the objective of our Thanksgiving address, is to keep in our minds how important our natural environment is and how important it is for us to be thankful for that. You know, and it's reciprocal as well because when we have a thankful, grateful mind, an optimistic mind, good things happen. You know, we smile more, we're more happy, we project an energy that contributes to universal energy, and that's all very important. We all have our responsibility. And if we can do nothing else, we can do that. So with, um, with that said, I'm gonna turn the mic over to Jacob and I'm gonna ask him to share um, our Gunyo Hanyo in our Gayakono uh, language. And just for anybody that may have a hat on, I don't really, it's Jacob. <laughs> but typically we ask people to remove their hats. Um, so I'm gonna ask Jacob to share that with us now. And just keep in your minds as he's saying these words, what I had just shared with you, because this is what he's expressing in our language. So. Dan and Dot, you guys go dance, what's wrong, see us, guy when go waddle, me and try a canto, so go in decent, so go away, gunyo, honey, it's a gunyo, so I'm gonna go hot. Dan and Dot, so it need decent on that, go to go net, it's a gunyo, so I'm gonna go hot. Dan and Dot, so it need decent on that, go to go net, it's a gunyo, so I'm gonna go hot. Dan and Dot, so it need gunyo, honey, had he cat, so I, the okay, ain't you do, me to gunyo, so I'm gonna go hot. Dan ain't do a choy in it, squinny dayo, me to gain your toe, I'm going to go hot. Dan ain't do a choy in it, some going decent, some go away, gain your honey, me to gain your toe, I'm going to go hot. Dan ain't toe, Dan ain't toe, no got queeny, you get a guy yet toe, gain your honey, Dan ain't toe. So, I forgot to tell you one other thing. <laughs> so, there's a part where Jacob says after each prayer, and that was. By the way, before I go into that, that was a very, very short version. I've heard <laughs> some of the men in our community at our ceremony say this for an hour and a half, just that one prayer of thanksgiving. And um, he's passed now, but his name was Hiram Miller. I just want to acknowledge him. But um, yeah, when he would acknowledge the trees, he would go on and on and on about the many hundreds of things that trees do for us. Right, but um, at the end of each acknowledgement, they say now our minds are one. And at the beginning of the speech, the 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 speaker will say, um, I, "I'm speaking on behalf of all of us." And if you agree with me, you can acknowledge that. So when you say now our minds are one, everybody there. Most people there will acknowledge that. They'll say, yeah, or they'll do some kind of acknowledgement to say, yeah, we agree with what the speaker is saying. We believe that to be true, and we, we want to express ourselves that way as well. So, um, so as Allison had said, we're going to share, well, Jacob's going to share um, a song. It's called Escanya Gainese, and it's a new woman shuffle dance. And this dance is... Um, it's a song that the men do to show their appreciation for women. And the reason why they do that is because women are life givers, right? So in our society as Haudenosaunee people, we're taught that women are held in esteem almost as high or just as high as the creator or the higher power, God or Buddha, whatever you refer to that higher power is. Um, and that's the way the men hold their women in that esteem because of, again, the ability to give life. Um, and in our society, we are a matriarchal society, so 
we follow our mother's line. So our mother's, mother's, mother's. So um, there's no, th th like Jacob has two sons, and he said, my sons are not Haudenosaunee <laughs> because his, his kids are from um, Mississaugas of the New Credit. S their mother is. But anyways, um, I don't know why I went on with that. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> sounded good. <laughs> Um, so anyways, we're going to have Jacob share this song, and I want all the women to, if you would like, to come up here and join me in a dance as Jacob sings for us. Is that okay? Okay. Come on. <laughs> it's a very simple step. So guys, how was it for you? Just kidding. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you very much to the organizers, the committee, um, and all the women that joined us. It was an honor to be here to help set the tone for your conference, although that's already been done in the organizing of your speakers and the various workshops. <laughs> um, so I just want to say thank you again for inviting us as local um, indigenous people from Six Nations, the Haudenosaunee people. And um, sorry, I'm still catching my breath. It looks really easy, but it's not, is it, ladies? <laughs> but um, yeah, so again, thank you very much for inviting us. And thank you for joining in in our opening address. Yeah.
Kelly and Jacob, thank you so much. That was beautiful. I really enjoyed it. So, another round of applause. That was awesome. Yeah, that was so awesome. Yeah. So, oh, thank you, Jody. Um, I would now like to invite Sarah Louise Ruder and Alice Damanio um, to give a statement of gratitude for the Indigenous peoples whose land we are gathered on today and to introduce our community guidelines. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for joining us in that opening address, and thank you so much to Kelly and to Jacob for starting us off in a good way. Um, first, expressing my gratitude for, for you to agree to come share uh, your traditions and your wisdom with us. It is so appreciated, um, and it's, it's really something that will be cherished as we move on throughout this conference. Uh, I would also like to thank all of the indigenous peoples across Turtle Island, or what we call North America as settlers, uh, who foster unique and enduring relationships with the land. Uh, so today we are gathering, meeting, and discussing on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Attawandron, or neutral peoples. And we are also located in occupying land that was promised to the Six Nations in the Haldeman Tract, Treaty 4. Uh, that land is, was originally promised to be uh, six miles on either side of the Grand River, and today that is only 5% of what remains. Um, so this is a personal acknowledgement in terms of the space that I occupy. Land acknowledgements are personal experiences. And so this is a starting point for us all to think about where we come from, uh, where we are, and uh, all the wonderful things that the land offers us here and, and wherever we occupy our, our spaces. Uh, it's also a starting point uh, beyond the land acknowledgement is a, is a hope to follow the guidance of the indigenous peoples and other settlers who are working towards decolonization um, and reconciliation beyond the ongoing colonial histories in Canada. So this land acknowledgement is a historical, historically accurate uh, statement to act against the erasure of colonial histories in Canada. Uh, but it's also one step that we take uh, in our very early humble stages uh, in the Canadian Society for Ecological Economics and in my own life as well, uh, to hope to build some relationships to work towards uh, a, a better future. So another person that I would like to introduce just briefly, uh, we are joined by Lila Burrier, who's an Ojibwe woman originally from Kuchiching First Nation and currently residing in Sarnia, Ontario. She's an educator, public speaker, social worker, and residential school survivor. From the ages of 6 to 14, Lila attended St. Margaret's Residential School in Port Francis, Ontario. Today, she travels to share her experience and healing journey. Lila was chosen to be a part of the National Survivors Circle for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and she holds a Bachelor's of Social Work from Carleton University and a Master's of Social Work from in Aboriginal Field of Study from Wilfrid Laurier University. With over 15 years of counseling experience, she's joining us over today, Thursday until Friday, uh, to offer counseling and support to settlers and Indigenous folks alike as we engage in some very difficult conversations. Uh, but Lila is also here uh, to have any sorts of conversations. She's been very generous already to share uh, some of her traditions and wisdom with an opening, uh, a smudging ceremony before our opening ceremony. And she's looking forward to get to know folks uh, over the next few days. So Lila, would you mind standing up? Thank you so much. So this is Lila. Um, oh. um, it's really an honor to have you join us over this conference. So today, we, we move on in our topics today. We are, we'll be continuing to speak about Indigenous issues. Um, but throughout the conference, if anything becomes difficult or you'd like to have someone to chat, just give Lila a wave as you head out the door and she'll come find you and you can have a, t a time to speak with her. So thank you very much uh, again to Kelly and Jacob. Uh, and yes, we really appreciate you starting us off in a good way. Well, as Sarah Louise said, these acknowledgements and land acknowledgements are the small step in a larger commitment to take responsibility in the task of uncertain and decolonizing. Though we are at very early humble stages in this process. Over the last months, part of the organizing committee has worked on decolonizing this conference, at least a bit, making it a space where indigenous people are welcome and acknowledged for the, the knowledge and wisdom so relevant in the environmental discourse. We read a lot, we got precious advice from people and groups, 
And we attended some conferences that served as good examples for, to learn from. We still made mistakes, mis mistakes along the process, and we are learning from them how to do better next time. But inclusivity concerns a lot of aspects, not only indigenous people. Indeed, we all have different backgrounds. Some of us belong to marginalized groups, all visible minorities, and all invisible minorities. And for this reason, we are still new in the registration process to suggest a guideline to foster a brave space. A space in which if we feel uncomfortable, it's because our vision is challenged and not because we are feeling attacked for how we are. We thank you a lot for the wise, sensible guidelines you suggested. And so we read them and we built on them to provide together the community guidelines for this conference. These guidelines are available on the website and in the program, and you can also find them printed in a poster at the registration desk at the entrance. We encourage you to look at them and keep them in mind. And last but not least, improving inclusivity is a work in progress. And thus, if any problem emerges, we kindly ask you to leave a, a message either at the booth at the entrance at the registration desk or using the form provided on the website. Thank you for your, your understanding and your collaboration. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah Louise and Alice. So this conference would not be possible um, without generous sponsorship. Um, and we're very grateful for support from the following organizations. The David Suzuki Foundation um, will be live streaming all eight of our keynote panels on their Science and Learning Center website and archiving the videos to provide accessible educational material. Um, and this is a fantastic opportunity to use this material in the future for any types of lectures or, or providing it to your students. For all of those who are currently online and following these keynotes, you can use the hashtag CANSI2019QA to ask any questions that you have of the keynotes. If you are here in the room and you would like to ask questions for the keynotes, where's VJ? VJ's right here. Um, and so you can just raise your hand or give VJ a wave, um, and he will give you some paper to write down your question um, and then and communicate it with the, keynote, uh, with the moderator. Additional, organiza additional organizations that I have to give thanks to. Sherwood Systems um, is CG's exclusive audio and visual provider, and they're facilitating um, the technical side of live streaming. Um, and so that, that's, thank you very much for that. And then Bullfog Power is powering this event with 100% green energy, um, a blend of wind, low impact hydropower, and it's all sourced from Canadian renewable energy facilities. So thank you, Bullfrog. So, I would now, um, again, this conference wouldn't be possible without the organizing work. Um, and so you'll see a lot of these people in the background um, as we work through the conference. Um, and I'm sure you've heard from Sophie as well, too, and her, all of her emails. <laughs> um, but I would like to introduce, um, first of all, Jerome Dupre. Um, he's president of CANSI. Um, and if you'd like to come to the stage, as well as the conference co-chairs, Sophie Sneedy and Caleb Ginrich Rigger. Um, I would like to invite you to up to say a few words. Bonsoir tout le monde, bienvenue à cette uh, conférence, merci beaucoup d'être là. Uh, dear participant, uh, <coughs> it was great pleasure that uh, the team of the Canadian Society for Ecological Economics welcomes you to this biennial conference. A tremendous amount of work has been done by the University of Waterloo team led by Sophie and Caleb. And I would like to, uh, on the behalf of the, the, the CANSI board and all CANSI members, I would like to thank them for that, uh, these efforts that have been done all over the year. And the uh, CANSI board can, uh, uh, have been there monthly to, uh, to see uh, how many time and uh, dedication you put into this. So thank you very much uh, uh, for this. If our ecological economic scientific approach to think and build a sustainable, respectful, and fair world for the human and all living beings has always been relevant, it is today more than ever essential. The collapse of biodiversity and climate puts humanity in a state of emergency. 
As scientists working at the interface of the natural and social, social sciences, we are advantageously placed to help the whole civil society to make a necessary, necessary ecological transition. In this sense, I invite you to continue thinking about innovative and original approaches in your science, but also to think about communi communi communicating your work and the ecological economics as widely as possible. We are in an era where scientists can no longer, no longer be content to just conduct their research. They must engage in their community to bring positive change. So let's use this conference to fill up on ideas, renew our motivation to act, and strengthen our collaboration. Thank you for your presence, and I wish you a great conference. Good evening. My name is Sophia Sanidi. And I'm Caleb Gingrich Regeer. And like has already been stated, we're your conference co-chairs. Welcome to CANSI 2019, Engaging Economies of Change. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dream for this conference began um, 18 months ago on our drive home from the CANSI 2017 conference. And we wanted to build on that success and push the conversation farther. We also wanted to bring that conversation to Waterloo Region, a place where we see a lot of energy around innovation and creativity, but working in a particular sort of technocratic and technical area, and we see a lot of need for that innovation creativity to be applied in other areas as well. We also recognize that we need to expand our community that we're speaking to. So we actively went out and we invited business leaders and community members, government workers, civil society, educators and activists alike to come and join in an exchange of ideas on some of the greatest issues that we all collectively face today. If you're familiar with the ecological economics community and you've been looking over our program, you might see some names that seem a little strange to be at a conference like this. That was intentional. We're, we're hoping to push the ecological economic scholarship to engage with ideas that we don't necessarily always agree with, but that come from people who are working towards the same goals. So we're hoping that over the next four days you f or three days that you find someone that you don't necessarily agree with on everything and have a deep conversation about where, where that comes from and what you can do. As emerging ecological economic scholars and as members of the emerging generation, we also, uh, sorry, I'm just being very nice. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, we also, thank you guys. Uh, we also decided to take a different approach to the conference structure. And so you'll notice that we've changed up a few things and we invite you to experiment with us and we hope that you will forgive us for any of the mistakes that we make <laughs> and celebrate the ones that are successful so that we can carry them forward. A conference like this isn't possible for two people to put on alone. There is a huge team of dedicated volunteers that have put in endless hours to make all of this happen, and we want to express our sincerest, um, sincerest thank you to all of them. Um, we will be thanking a variety of people over the course of the conference, um, and want you to all know that that comes from us directly, and I believe from all of the attendees as well. Um, so we won't take any more of your time. There's a fantastic keynote panel to get to, and hope you enjoy the conference. Thank you.